Awesome. So welcome to Cardinal House and our AMA here. We have BioFi on with us. My name is Chris uh, and it is the 7th of September. Just for anybody listening to after this, uh, 7th of September, new updates will definitely come in the future. But let's get it started. Like I said, uh, we do things a little bit differently here. So if you are in the audience, would you mind going to that AMA polls channel? And we're going we're gonna to do some polls. Go ahead and react to whatever answer you would do. If you're here uh, with me, Brian, uh, Fitz, and, and Chris, you don't necessarily have to do that. We're going to go through them live just to get to know you guys a little bit better on a very unrelated note necessarily to your project. So more just that, that dive into the team and, you know, break some ice a little bit, get a, get a little more comfortable with what we're doing. I think AMA sometimes can be a little bit cold in the beginning. So just trying to, trying to warm everything up. Um, but if you guys are ready, let, let's get it started. Um, again, they are completely unrelated. So would you rather travel back in time or into the future? I'll let whoever wants to go answer first. Let me jump in there. I think I'd rather go back in time. <laughs> When there was, when there was real music, <laughs> <laughs> real music. Okay, what what era are you thinking? Yeah, well, look, let's go back to the eighties, like. Okay. My life is a little bit more simpler. This is all <laughs> Michael J. Fox Back to the Future stuff. So. <laughs> awesome, awesome, love it. <laughs> love the music comment too. <laughs> yeah. What what uh what's your go to band? Go to band. Oh. Jeepers. I'm kind of uh cross between everything from from rap to house music to everything. But I was at a concert about two weeks ago and it was Liam Gallagher. So uh British rock is kind of where I'm at. So he was a uh, part of Oasis, a big concert. Now in Dublin this weekend, Garth Brooks is in town, but I definitely will not really? be going to get him. What? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Garth, Garth Brooks is is known uh in Oklahoma, uh where where I went to university. So definitely huge. He he wrote a, a lot of music out there. Um so yeah, that, yeah. that is definitely a big name. He's got four <laughs> sold out shows, eighty-eight thousand people going each night. So <laughs> There's obviously some people that like them, but yeah, let's mm -hmm. stick with a bit of bit of eighties and maybe fair a bit enough. of dance music. So, fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. How about for yourselves? Back in the past or in the future? Uh, this is Chris. I'll jump in on that one. I, I, I could find interesting things about both. Um, I'd love to see what's going on in the future, but for me, more more close to home, personal perspective, I think I'd like to go back because, it, you know, you can always find your younger self and say, hey. Bitcoin, right? <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. So we're looking like like within the last twenty years back for for everybody if we're going back, not too far. Yeah, not too far, not too far. <laughs> um, but you know, for for reasons like that, you could always say, you know, what when you think back, you know, but nothing gives you perspective like time, right? You're looking mm -hmm. back, say, well, had I done this, had I done that, you, you always operate on the best information that you have, but. You know, could mm -hmm. say, you know what? There's a couple of things that could have made a difference, and and maybe I would change a couple of them. Not too many, just a couple. One hundred percent. How about for you, Brian? Forward or back? Yeah. And can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I I think I would go back. You know, uh, I live just uh, you know on the edge of St. Louis uh, in Missouri, and um, it was interesting. You know, I went to the uh, the Arch. And for those of you who've traveled to the Arch, you know, it's the gateway to the West, uh, right there at the, the base of the Mississippi River. And mm -hmm. um, there's, a, um, there's an exhibit, you know, it's a, it's a museum underneath. And this is something that Enterprise Holdings uh, helped to fund. You know, I was at Enterprise for three and a half years, over three and a half years. And they helped to, uh, to fund this, uh, this little museum exhibition. And it's it's kind of cool, you know. It, there's a lot in there about Lewis and Clark um, mm. when they gathered up a bunch of provisions and and took off across the country uh, to explore the you know this wide open territory of of uh, you know the uh, our land before it was uh, uh, you know uh, overrun by people. And it, it was quite amazing to to read some of the stories about things that they saw, you know, just the 
the raw nature uh, without big cities there. Uh, it would be nice to go back and see that, what that looked mm-hmm. like. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That's really, really awesome. I love the perspectives that you guys have. Very, very well thought out. Uh, next one, we got Ethereum or Constellation Network? I'll jump in first on this one. Um, I'm, you know, obviously Ethereum is kind of the workhorse that everybody uses today. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm in on Constellation. I'm all in. I awesome. think they're bringing, <laughs> they are bringing it uh, for the future. Uh, and they're the next gen technology, being able to connect all the different chains, all the different protocols. Uh, so yeah, I think they are going to provide the opportunity for projects like ours and, and many others to get off the ground, you know, and to mm-hmm. really connect to a huge ecosystem. And when the, as you will know about BioFi being part of the community, we're all about helping the ecosystem grow and encourage people to come in. Constellation is going to be going to make things like that easier by making those connections affordable, you know, cost effective, and um, uh, universal, pretty much universal. Mm-hmm. So, Constellation for me. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and and I I would just say you know we um, uh, we talk about this to in a lot of different settings. Um, mm-hmm. We went through the first uh, flight program, the inaugural flight program at Constellation to, you know, be trained in the crypto space and undergo some, you know, some in-depth knowledge transfer and learn how to launch uh, a crypto project in the market. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, you know, to to plan, to actually plan to integrate into the uh, to have a state channel and plan to integrate into the hypergraph network. So we're yeah. very close to all of that. We also went through the second um, flight program, which just ended here a few weeks back. We went through that as well uh, in support of all the uh, the companies that were going through there. So between uh, those events and working with uh, Constellation, uh, by the way, we also had here at the uh, Chandler Hill uh, Winery. We also had a um, uh, a remote high def event. So high def was out in Los Angeles. Of course, it was uh, online, and um, we did the same thing here in St. Louis. Uh, one of our advisors, Rick Toman, uh, maybe he's on here. I'd have to look. Um, he opened up the uh, winery for us. He's a part owner of the Chandler Hill Winery. Uh, just outside of St. Louis there, and opened it up for us. And one of the guys uh, that came up to that, uh, Miguel Thorpe, uh, lives down in Arkansas, brought two of his DAG buddies, and they left at midnight from Arkansas, drove six and a half hours, and came to the parking lot of Chandler Hill Winery, uh, parked the car, slept for a couple hours, and then Rick showed up, opened up the winery, and then we all kind of poured in and spent the day uh, and around, you know, monitoring and watching high def and doing other things at the winery. Uh, but it was just wonderful. And that just goes to show you um, just the intense, um, you know, uh, uh, people and the, the, the focus, you know, the, the love of Constellation that is just hard to explain that you'd have Miguel drive that, that distance and come up and spend the day with us and then people coming in from all around the state. It was just wonderful uh, to be there and see that. And so we know Constellation has a very active community and a very passionate community. Uh, and to see all that there, uh, we know that uh, it's a fantastic organization. They do a great job in social media uh, and look forward to get integrated with them. Yeah, yeah, I, I love the, uh, <laughs> the well thought out answer to this one as well. Sorry, Fitz, did you have something to add in? I know. I was going to say, there's nothing else for me to say, but just constellation all the way. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. You guys are me nothing else to say. <laughs> you guys are definitely in a u- unique position there. The whole the whole BioFi team in a very unique spot there compared to most, at least. Um, next up, next question we got for you guys. Uh, which development are you more proud of, Doge Run or Satek? Oh, I'll take this one first. Um, we actually love both of them. And and the reason the reason for that is because uh, both of these products are, 
you know, part of the um, the seed, you know, the seed products of the biometric financial ecosystem. So we we talk about the biomet the biometric financial ecosystem, like the Apple App Store, right? When Apple first came out with the first iPhone, they had a, a handful of products. You know, you could take a, a note, you could write a note, you could uh, pull up, you know, a browser on your device and just do a couple of things, you know, check the weather, just some really basic stuff was the very first thing out the shoot, you know, when they first launched. And the reason why they did that is they wanted to to give people an idea to 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 help people imagine what it could be. But Apple knew that there was no way that they could ever go and build every application and innovate around every concept and idea in the world. I could never do it because it takes too many people and, and too much time. And, and it takes a lot of innovation. And this comes from every corner of the world. And that is what the biometric financial ecosystem is all about, helping each person in every country and territory around the world. And it's not about us, it's about all the providers. We give that, say tech, we give that Dodron, the Ethos Metaverse, we put that in there to help give other people ideas, to help guide them. And then they come in, the providers come in and bring in these great products. They use the biometrics, they use the metaverse. Maybe they have their own world in there like Cyberly or DISC, right? Drone Industry Systems Corporation. How uh, they can come in there and use all these capabilities and take advantage and then bring their own products. And so now the ecosystem is really about all the providers. And that's what's so wonderful about it because it brings great utility to each and every person. And that's why it's so special and why we enjoy both of those the same way. Yeah. Do you mind, do you mind touching up just for, for anyone that maybe is hearing about BioFi in general for the first time, what the difference is between those two? What each of oh, them certainly. is accomplishing? Yeah, certainly. Um, the... SATEC technology really gets into uh, biometrics that's, you know, military grade, right? This is what you use for um, validating somebody that you need to allow access to very privileged or special information. It could be their own data. It could be their personal data. It could be their banking information. It could be access to Uni Safebox, where they're putting their will, where they're putting their 12 keywords to all of their wallets. Uh, all of this is guarded by your biometrics, your, your face, and your voice. And those two biometrics together create an impenetrable way of validating yourself, authenticating yourself into anything that you need to do, anything where you need protection. And we built it into all the products. It's in the Phoenix X1, the smartphone, it's in the cryptic wallet, Uni safe box. Uh, Cyberleads in integrating it. It's in Governor Dow. Governor Dow has it running. Um, we're working with Providence South Africa and Tell Solutions Africa. All these are putting in the biometrics into their electronic wallets, their money send products. Uh, it's going in everything. DISC is putting it in, Drone Industry Systems Corporation. Um, we have a company out of the Philippines uh, that we're launching that's just putting it in. It's going all over the place. And this biometric is perfect for safeguarding from fraudsters and keeping your information safe. And you control it. You control your own information. The Ethos Metaverse is a whole area built in the Metaverse using Unreal Engine 5. And it's something that initially was focused on NFT competitions. And in that, you have the doges, you have those NFTs, and those are for sale right now. You can find those on the biometricfinancial.org website and app.biofitoken.io. Those can be purchased, and those are important to have. Uh, and we can talk about that and get into a whole detail about what that's all about in terms of the competitions and how it works, and there's a lot going on there. And that's about ready to launch here fairly soon. So for all the listeners, now is the time to get one of those NFTs. Now is the time to acquire one or more. 
uh, if you're interested in accessing the metaverse and you're interested in competitions. Uh, the other thing that we're working on is we have in the metaverse a learning center. It's like a university. And so we are preparing an immersive experience for a conference coming up in Johannesburg next week. And that conference is going to have a four question survey using the ethos metaverse and all of the CEOs, it's a CEO conference and Providence South Africa will be hosting a booth that will have all this technology in it. And there the CEOs will be able to come in, sit down in front of a laptop and go through within a minute, go through an immersive experience in the metaverse with a four question survey. And they'll be able to see how the metaverse can help them with their customers, how they can help, how it can help them with their employees. They can do training in there. They can do certification. They can use the metaverse as a customer acquisition strategy to have the customers come in and sign up for a new credit card, sign up for a new banking account, maybe take a survey and enter in for a drawing. All of these things happen in the metaverse in a much more immersive way than you would ever see in a website. So we're mm -hmm. very excited about that. Um, those two big strands of utility are very important for the biometric financial ecosystem, and they help provide the glue in the ecosystem, the seed products, and they help the providers imagine and dream about other things that they can bring in and add into the ecosystem. So it's very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really, you are killing it with these descriptions. <laughs> you you got everything down to a T and I really love the, the descriptiveness that you're, you're bringing to everybody. I, I think it, it shows a lot on one, the, the founders and, and, the people running a project on if they can actually explain everything in a way that, you know, you're taking a very complex topic and being able to break it down so that even, you know, the, uh, the most uneducated on the topic or even just people that, you know, maybe don't have a good grasp on what crypto is bringing to the real world can, can grasp it and understand, you know, what you guys are doing. So it's super important. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. We're, you know, we were so passionate about this entire mm -hmm. space. Um, and of course, um, you know, with all of these, these, these conversations that we have out with the communities, um, we really appreciate this opportunity here to speak with you and with your community today and others that join, because we really thank you and the community for being involved, for helping, for, um, providing input and feedback. And we get all kinds of great comments and we read all those, we interact with them. We love to get those because it helps us make good decisions. Mm -hmm. It helps us think about what we're doing and integrate different perspectives. And so that inclusiveness, that ability to hear from somebody from Hong Kong or somebody from South Africa or uh, Thailand or Germany, any place around the world, the UK, uh, where Stefan is located in Ireland, to hear all of these different thoughts and ideas and work with each person to make sure that we're producing the right utility. This is very important for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that is one of the hardest things to actually grasp listening to what the consumer wants and what is most beneficial. And it sounds like you guys are really taking that into account. <clears throat> yeah, it's really, really awesome to hear. Um, I, I want to continue the flow just so we can can get on to everything that you guys have coming because I know BioFi in itself is an amazing, an amazing uh, company that's doing a lot of things. Um, and so if, or I guess project that's doing a lot of things. Um, so uh, not trying to like leave these questions behind, but I, I'm going to move on from them so that we can, I think it's like the perfect segue into, into what you guys are doing and who you are. Uh, if you guys wouldn't mind talking a little bit about yourself, and, you know, introducing what you do, what your role is on the team and, um, and what your past is, has been like, just a quick introduction on, you know, what your experiences are coming into this, uh, and how that's affected your, your role here. Yeah, no problem. I'll go real quick and then turn it over to Chris and Stefan. So, um, and it just, again, you know, thank you so much. We, we really appreciate this, um, as CEO of this, I really, really passionately enjoy what I do here. 
Um, as you know, BioFi, we call it biometric financial. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a utility token. Uh, we have this, you know, great set of solutions, very secure set of solutions. Um, we leverage the the blockchain. We leverage DeFi, Web 3.0. Uh, we address many of the concerns that people have in each country and territory around the world about safeguarding their personal data, right? Being safe from that exploitation by fraudsters. That's that's a big key of this. Um, you're going to hear us talk about this a lot. We do not. And we are not in the business of selling your data or anybody's data. We do not want anybody to intrude on your privacy. We want to safeguard your personal information. We would be so happy if you have peace of mind going to bed every night, knowing that you have the confidence and ensure that you have the power. The access belongs to you for your data. You're the owner of it. You, the individual person, owns your data. And with your biometrics, you can control it. Uh, we have really focused on most of the business sectors globally because we realize that these can be offered through the ecosystem or the portal, biometricfinancial.org and app.biofitoken.io. And this family of secure products should be easy, and they are easy to download and, and access and activate. You can get many of these on the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. And because we're truly global in nature, um, we're really focused on listening to the communities, getting involved in uh, their personal devices, you know, how they use them, how they interact with them so that we can define the right type of utility around this. Uh, we've got the, you know, the speed in the process, the security, uh, the anonymity of the biometric identity, right? Because we're using the blockchain and everything is decentralized. Um, so with this, we can really improve the personal data security of each person in every country and territory around the world. And this has a lasting impact on everybody's lives. So this is about helping people. So you're gonna hear from Chris, you're gonna hear from Stefan. This is an amazing team. This is a passionate team with decades of experience. You've got financial experience, you know, banking, credit cards, innovation, crypto, blockchain, IoT, uh, AI. So what we're really focused on with all that technology is creating that greatest utility for every person. And again, it's, it's not about us, it's about the providers. So the ecosystem itself can run on its own. It doesn't need us there to run it. It can run on its own, and it does. And so... As we talk through this conversation here, um, you'll hear us talk about biometricfinancial.org and mm -hmm. app.biofitoken.io. These are important websites that we want people to visit. And with those, you'll learn about the ecosystem. You'll have access where to find the token. Um, and there's a great rewards, an amazing rewards capability in app.biofitoken.io. We'd love you guys to take a look at that. Um, we talk about it in our channels all the time, and people talk about it. Uh, so we ask that, you know, go check it out, go visit those. Um, then uh, we will be happy to take uh, any questions we have time here on any of this. Uh, but we really do appreciate the opportunity, and thank you so much in the community. And now I'll turn it over to Chris. Thanks, Brian. So my name is Chris Benedict, and I'm a co-founder here uh, at Finavant with with Brian. And what I'll say just in brief is that Brian, myself, Stephen, <laughs> Stephen, um, and our advisors, so a lot of our key advisors, um, have those extensive backgrounds and histories. And a lot of folks would look at us and say, well, these are a bunch of trade by guys. And, and yeah, you know, we, that's where our, our background is. And, and our background is in bringing secure products to market, things that are brand new at the time. And one of the things that I think folks need to understand is a project it doesn't happen overnight. When you bring new technologies and you bring things to the marketplace, you have to look, take a long-term perspective. Adoption is slow. For the, most case, for the most part, adoption of new technologies is very slow. Take a quick example. Um, you look at Apple Pay, right? Contactless payments. A couple of our advisors, Brian and I, both all worked on bringing contactless payments to the market years ago before it was even known as Apple Pay. And uh, we worked on things like the, the first contactless subway uh, trial in New York City. 
that there's been a whole lot of things that we have been involved with in, in help bring to market, things that now are commonplace. And that's where we believe BioFi is going to be and SATEC, the biometric security solution. These things take time. And to answer the question before that, I, that we didn't get to is, what's my favorite? Well, as much as I love Dodron, and I think that's going to take us into the future, SATEC is my favorite because that's what got us here. Right, Brian and I have been developing this for over five years now, bringing this technology to market, solidifying it, improving it, um, making it what it is today. And it is super secure, um, and it's a solution that's easy for people to use. So, it, you know, uh, if there's something I would, I would, ex I would extend to the audience is, think long term. You know, we're not a 30, 60, 90 day crypto project. Our emission schedule for BioFi goes out over 10 years. We are focused on the long term because we can deliver solid long term value beyond what we can what we can foresee at this point. But it's stability, it's long term focus, and building those providers partnerships are going are incremental because it gives us diversity in our solution. It gives us diversity of of uh, customer base, of user base, and you know. When things aren't going great in the economy for some of our providers, it'll be going super well for others. So that helps us be a balanced project. We have solutions that are in market now. We have providers. We're not here trying to get funding or raise money for a concept we're going to try to bring to market over the next couple of years. We're here and we're now with solutions that make sense and drive revenue. So I'll toss it over to Stephen right now. Cheers, Chris. So, um, yeah, great um, to get the update from everyone there. So, I'm Stephen Fitzpatrick. I'm I'm based here in Dublin and Ireland, um, and I head up our European operation, um, which stretches from uh, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Um, I'm predominantly been a sales leader um, with some um, you know specialty within uh, security, telecoms, and IoT. And um, over the last number of years, I've worked on some of the largest um, projects that have been. Um, in the world in IoT, um, which is a very, very interesting um, position to be in because day to day I see um, some of the major brands that have actually produced some of the projects and delivered them. Um, and I see these in everyday usage, whether that's from being from cars to sporting fields to, you know, uh, smart watches to, you know, smart bins. Um, so a lot of experience within there. So I'm leading up our sales. Um, sales uh, team at the minute and uh, what I actually have been uh, working on is a number of major projects that like Chris has said is bringing uh, real revenue the real partnerships they are purchasing we are implementing we are rolling out we have been successful in deploying our uh, solutions out there so think about that um, you know in in a short space of time we've we've been able to implement rollout and deliver um, you know our solutions to a market. Um, you know, and that's very, very, very powerful for a utility to be able to deliver, um, have a, a projects uh, signed off and have real revenue coming off them. Um, the great thing about, um, you know, the, the utility that we do offer is that has many different use cases. So, um, you know, and this is, you know, really, you know, bringing great solutions to the markets that are really needed, um, you know, our, our partners in Ghana are rolling out one and a half million users. Um, on a mobile money platform, which, you know, needs security on it, which, you know, is protecting people's, um, you know, their living, their transactions, transactions that they do every day. You know, so there's really, really, really cool um, utility out there um, for um, the majority of the projects that we're working on. Um, going back into what Chris is saying, what is my favorite of all the products? Um, look, Satec is, as Chris said, is our bread and butter. It's the, it's it's what's delivering, and it's got us to this stage. Um, but um, as Brian said earlier on, the meta the metaverse is actually uh, being utilised this weekend in, or this week coming in South Africa, where you're going to have, you know, CEOs of some of the largest uh, players on the planet going to be playing with with our metaverse and uh, being able to go through uh, a questionnaire on there in real time. So. You know, it's a really exciting times for uh, Finovant, BioFi, uh, for all our other products that we have, the say text of this world. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty cool. Awesome, awesome. And I, I love how you guys, uh, I don't mean to, to cut you off, Brian, but <laughs> uh, 
I love how you guys uh are you spoke that you were kind of leading up a lot of the stuff on the European side of things, uh, and then even going all the way down into into Africa. Um, and it was kind of cool to me seeing your guys because I checked out your LinkedIn profiles. You guys are kind of spread out across across the U.S. I believe, correct? And then one of you is in Europe as well. That, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's interesting for internal calls. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Gets you gets you a lot of uh, a lot of different eyes in different parts of the world. So definitely aligns with with what you were saying, Brian, about the overarching goal of collecting the thoughts of the community of you know the world versus just a specific demographic. So but very very interesting on that front as well. Um, and I, I really appreciate the the answers as as always. And um, I, I just wanted to I guess branch off from from there. Uh, because I kind of understand the reasoning behind BioFi, behind BioFi, because there's a lot of problems with it right now with people selling data and that kind of thing. And I do have some more specific questions, uh, relating to the whole BioFi model. If uh, you know, because data selling data is a very, very lucrative business, as I'm sure you guys are aware. You know, for companies that collect it at scale, without without collecting the data at scale, it's worth almost nothing. But collecting it, you know, for millions of people is now worth a good chunk of money. Um, so, so what's the whole business model that BioFi is uh, kind of following on if it does not have that that piece as well? Yeah, it's a, it's a great it's a great question. Um, so the the whole ecosystem, the biometric financial ecosystem, is based on the BioFi token. So the the beauty of that is you have this utility token, which becomes the glue to tie all of the pieces together. So if you have a a person in Johannesburg who has a banking app on their mobile device and they need to pay a bill, they need to send some money, uh, receive a payment, you know, update their address, they're going to be interacting with the voice and face biometrics at the time they conduct that transaction. So we want to make sure, just as if you were accessing your crypto wallet, we want to make sure that it's you who is performing that access and not somebody else trying to get into, you know, picked up your phone and they're trying to get into your app. They're trying to get a hold of your money. They're trying to change your address so they can send your your check somewhere else or set up a new account that's illegal you know, a fraudster account. Uh, this happens to people all the time. And so every time somebody uses those biometrics, then uh, Providence or Tell Solutions or whichever company will be paying for that use. And that'll be in, in the form of BioFi. So BioFi can be picked through a rewards option up front and a provider can receive the API and everything that goes with that, the videos, the documentation, um, by picking a rewards option on app.biofitoken.io. And they would download that and integrate it to their website. They could integrate it in Web 3.0, right? Uh, like you see with Governor Dow. Uh, it could be on device for your iOS device, your Android device. Um, and there's also a cross-platform capability. So if you're into React Native, which some companies are, maybe 20, 30% of global corporations use React Native. So that's there as well. And in any of these cases, that BioFi that would be purchased is then used to pay for those transactions. That would be the corporation going in and purchasing that off the market. Or if they don't have a way to do that, uh, they could hand the money over to the treasury uh, within Biometric Financial, and the Treasury could make that purchase on their behalf. And the beauty of that, and this has already been happening, by the way, the beauty of that is that it takes the tokens off the market, and it provides a great way for them to pay for their usage as they go along. Within the ecosystem itself, you have the Cryptic Wallet, which has an advertising component, which uses BioFi. You have the UniSafeBox Password Manager, which you can purchase with BioFi. Uh, you have the Phoenix X1, which will be purchasable with BioFi. 
and that will be preloaded with all these wonderful provider apps and capabilities on that device, which is just amazing. Uh, then you have the Ethos Metaverse with the NFTs. You can purchase the NFTs right now, today. Uh, and then you have the ability to uh, enter into competitions with those Doge NFTs. That is finished and ready to launch as we speak. So look forward to talk to you more about that and get that uh, out to your community. Uh, and then we have all of that is with BioFi. Uh, and then we have the immersive experiences that we're working with the uh, Providence uh, South Africa in Johannesburg. Uh, you'll see that starting to roll out that kind of university training certification capability. Uh, that'll be wonderful to build that up over time. I think that's going to get a lot of interaction. A lot of companies are going to want to do that because it's so fun for their employees and their customers. Uh, it mm -hmm. should help to improve their acquisition strategies. Uh, but all of this together, um, built into that entire ecosystem, is incredible utility for the BioFi token. This is just the beginning. There will be all kinds of other ways that it gets leveraged in the future. The cryptic wallet itself is on a trajectory to do much more than it's currently doing. You know, with the managing of all the different wallets across the networks and uh, connecting up and, uh, oh, in fact, you know what's interesting? On the iOS version of the cryptic wallet, so for those of you in the audience who have iPhones, you can actually use the iOS version of cryptic wallet. We haven't announced this yet, by the way, so we'll announce it here. Um, we actually have the capability for you to go in, take the BioFi that's in your cryptic wallet, and log into, you know, Web3, log into app.biofitoken.io and pick a rewards option directly from the wallet on your phone. And this is just an amazing capability. Not too many wallets offer this type of a feature. It's, mm -hmm. it's actually more of a type of option. Uh, but we built that in. It's in iOS right now. We'll put it in Android in a little bit. Uh, but there it is. So those of you who have iOS devices, try that out. It's great technology. It makes the you know one-stop shop process work very smooth. In your iOS app, you can go directly into app.biofitoken.io, pick your rewards, and it'll, uh, with the smart contracts in place, uh, move out of your wallet into the staking contract, into the actual uh, rewards contract, and, uh, and handle that on your phone in the iOS cryptic wallet. It's quite amazing. Awesome. 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 I, I really love the products you guys are developing. And I guess to, to kind of further my, my question. So it seems like you guys have a lot of these different security features that add one, you know, convenience and integration that just isn't, it isn't there, right? The use, the, the UI for things right now in crypto is abysmal. It's really, really poor. Um, and, and you guys are adding a lot of these things. How, how would, how do all these different pieces of products and products themselves kind of play into the BioFi tokenomics in the ecosystem as a whole? Yes, it's a great question. Everything is interconnected. So all of these products, all of these utilities are designed from the ground up to work in the ecosystem to be self-sufficient. So something like Uni Safebox, now that that's in place, it's completely blockchain-based, by the way. Every bit of Uni Safebox is all blockchain based. It's it's impressive technology, incredible technology. It has your biometrics built in there, and when you go in to um, pick your your option, right? I want a uh, six month, I want a one year plan, I want a three year plan. You'll be able to purchase that with BioFi directly through the app, and it's just amazing that. All of this is built in from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Everything we're doing with Cryptic Wallet is being built in and around this technology. Everything we're working on with DISC, right? Drone Industry Systems Corporation, Governor Dow, right? The whole Dow community, uh, working through Providence, Intel Solutions in Africa. All of this is being designed from the ground up to work with the, the BioFi token. And the beauty of that is that once it's ingrained in there, once it's built in from the very beginning, every upgrade to that carries that forward in the future. 
and every one of the providers that comes in and then connects to those utility features also uses the BioFi token. They may have their own tokens. Each one, DISC will have its own token, right? Governor Dow has had its own token for a long time and they're using the biometrics. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of the ecosystem is that it really opens up a lot of choice for people. And you can see the benefit of the biometric financial ecosystem, how it supports these providers. They have their own tokens. You have the BioFi token and it's a wonderful relationship from the beginning, designed to work together and create that great utility for each and every person in every country and territory around the world. Gotcha. Uh, would you be able to kind of give a specific example of, of how, because to me, I mean, I may completely be misunderstanding because I think the tokenomics were one of the pieces that, uh, that I really wanted to touch up on today. Um, and is the BioFi token providing more of a um, of an option, a second option for these businesses to integrate, whether it be through um, through payments of some sort, or is, is it? Am I completely off off the grid there with uh, with that thought? Yeah, the 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 way the tokenomics work in general is from a you know forty thousand foot level. It's a ten year emission schedule. Mm -hmm. And 48% of all of the BioFi tokens are designed to go back to the community. So over the course of 10 years, as people come in, it could be a regular person who just wants to be a part of the community. Maybe they want to use some of the utility that's there. Um, there's so many different providers coming in, so they have lots of opportunity to pick the utility they like. And then you have the um, the rewards options available. So within the rewards options, there's four of them right now. The way the smart contracts are designed around these four options, these rewards options, are that they will be adjusted over the next 10 years. So this has been out just over four months. Can you imagine? Just just literally over just four months, the BioFi token has been out there. So this has got a 10-year emissions. So those rewards that are out there will be adjusted every six months, every 12 months. You'll start to see them change over time and new options will be added. The smart contract, the solidity code has been designed so that this can be changed on the fly as we go along. So we don't have to go and reissue, recertify new contracts. So this is all done, by the way. A lot of the design has been done to maximize operational efficiencies. In other words, it can run on its own. We don't want to build like this huge operational environment where it takes hundreds of people to run something because mm -hmm. that would be an efficient use of those tokens of that ecosystem for everybody that wants to partake in it. And the goal of the tokenomics is to give back 48% everybody who's holding the token over that 10 year span. So when you hear people like James Pelton, by the way, talking about this and doing the DCA, the dollar cost averaging, the reason why is because over time, this builds in an incredible way. You have a lot of utility being built in that people can access and take advantage of. And that utility is what's driving the use of the token. So if you look at the tokenomics, it's all about leveraging the token in and around the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about Right now, in this conversation, the most immediate utility. So there's lots of utility available day one, a ton amount of utility. You've got Uni Safebox, you've got Cryptic Wallet, you have the voice and face biometrics, you have the Ethos Metaverse, the Doge Run, right? The Phoenix X1 mm -hmm. is on its way. It's had a, a first version, so it's going on its second big engineering iteration which is due out next year. And we can spend a whole session just talking about that alone. That's an amazing thing. So all of the tokenomics at the moment are based on using the utility 
the providers coming in and using the utility and all that's based around that. What's on the roadmap coming up is things like liquidity pools for insurance and municipal bonds. Mm -hmm. So we will have to get into, and this is all about our financial background and how BioFi really takes advantage of tokenomics capabilities within the crypto industry. How do we create a way for liquidity pools to bring down the cost of insurance for somebody who needs to buy insurance? How do we use it to open up the municipal bonds infrastructure, right? The investment world to people who want to get a safe investment and they've only got a hundred bucks or 500 bucks. They don't have 10,000 or a quarter million or some large amount to invest in one of these municipal bonds. They just have a few hundred dollars that they need to invest and they want to put it in something really safe. That will allow that to happen by opening up these liquidity pools. This is a whole nother side of our tokenomics that we haven't talked about, but it's a great way, I think, a great segue to bring in somebody like Rick Toman, who is one of our advisors, that we could talk about that side of the tokenomics in another session with you. And we can give some great examples of how the BioFi token is being purchased on the market right now through organizations that are using the biometrics. Gotcha, gotcha. In the whole ecosystem, each and every participant that, that comes in and each person that partakes in the ecosystem is either part of the rewards process, they're going to be adding liquidity into one of these pools and receiving a reward for being part of a pool, helping fund a pool or being part of a pool. And you'll see this described in the tokenomics. So some of the tokenomics is happening immediately day one. That is because you have utility provided day one. If you look at a lot of crypto projects, there's no utility for years, mm -hmm. right? Because they have to go build it. They have to, they have to hire developers and, and put together an architecture and a design and coding and build something. It takes a long time to do that. And take a look at many of the projects and some will never succeed because it's hard to do. It's hard to build things. And so some people have great ideas, but the execution is a different matter. And so we came into this with utility that already existed. So your BioFi token is being used right now in the tokenomics. And what's to come is now the liquidity pools. And building on this 10-year emissions schedule and opening this up to a ton of other people. So every new provider that comes in and on the roadmap, we open up the second half of this, which is just incredible. Yeah. <clears throat> I love the, the structure, you guys. It's definitely more aligned with a traditional business structure, which is coming to crypto, coming to DeFi in general, but not quite here just yet. So I, I love the future thinking that you guys have had with your your long term plan and and everything in between. Um, kind of branching off, if you're okay with the change in topic, just a little bit. Um, we had okay, we've had a couple questions talking about your your BioFi locks, right? So locking your passwords or locking your wallet with uh, whether it be facial recognition or voice um, or something along those lines. Um, with that, what would happen if there was some kind of, of accident that took, you know, that essentially, you know, if someone passed away or if there was some kind of issue with, uh, with maybe you had to get, you know, have some kind of surgery and it no longer could recognize your face or voice or, or something along those lines. Um, because I know you guys have something about the, we had someone else talk about the inheritance feature. Um, but I was wondering if you wouldn't mind touching up on that. That's great. Chris, do you want to take this one? This is a great yeah. topic. Yeah, happy to. So that's a pretty common question when people ask about biometrics, right? Because what happens if mm -hmm. I get a cold? What happens if I get laryngitis? <laughs> what happens if I, no, it, it happens, you know, and, and, and these are edge cases to be sure. But what happens if I'm in an accident and I can't speak or I have a bandage on my face or something like that? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, 
float or not, these are possibilities, right? These things mm -hmm. can happen, and people don't want to be separated from their assets, whatever that looks like. So in every solution we have out there, we recommend, and, and in ones that we're in discussion with today, we recommend having another way in there. So let's say something does happen and you know you can't verify biometrically. You, you've lost your ability to speak, you, you know, whatever the case may be. So we would recommend to whoever that provider is that uses our service to have a backup, similar to like now when you lose your password. What is, you use a one-time one code. Use you know, what is other information that you can verify that you do own that account. What are things that they can put in place? Now, we recommend a very high friction experience there because it's a one-off. You know, mm -hmm. if you lose access to it, we want to make sure that that is indeed the right Chris <laughs> using yeah. that wallet. Uh, so we would make we would say, okay, what are the things that that person is has or has that they can be confident that that is indeed that person. So mm -hmm. whether it's collecting a secret passphrase to, to hold somewhere, uh, whether it's access to uh, a, a phone that's on file, a phone and an email, whatever the case may be, that's what we recommend. Definitely have a couple of, of solutions in the back that say in the event, in the unlikely event, how does that person recover it? The other thing to think about is this: if it's on a, if it's on access to, say, the cryptic wallet, right? You all, you should always have your seed phrases protected somewhere. And let's mm -hmm. say you have them, you know, in the Unisafe box, you could save them there as well. You mentioned the inheritance feature, and that's a really neat thing that people are interested with. That if you you can store all your passwords, all your seed phrases, and everything in the Unisafe box, and set a a timer, if you will, or set a date in the future that if, if you don't reset it, it's going to transfer to somebody else all that information. Mm. So, yeah, we, we definitely want to, we definitely see that those are concerns people have. And though remote, they're reality, uh, things happen. So, yes, we would want to back up there as well. But high friction experience, make sure it is indeed that. Gotcha. That's very, very interesting. That, that, uh, the whole inheritance, it's the first I heard about the inheritance. So, that that is an interesting topic that I think uh <laughs> like yeah. once you guys start start like hammering out the details and, and everything, I think it'd be really, really interesting to to see how that works. Yeah, let me let me just take another couple seconds on that. And it's yeah. within Unisafe Fox Password Manager. Everyone who's listening is encouraged to go check it out. If you have BioFi, you can get a minimum of 30 days free to try it out. So all you have to do is go to our website, app.biofitoken.io, our project site. And when you enroll there, you'll see that you have the ability to stake BioFi. And whether you stake BioFi or not, the fact that you have some, and you only really need one, the fact that you have that, you can get into the ecosystem and you can see that you have access to the Unisafe Box Password Manager. Download it, give it a try. The inheritance feature is very cool. Now, the person that you're sending it to or that you're setting up the inheritance feature also has to have a Unisafe Box account. But you can play around with it, see how it works. It's very simple, and all you need from that person is their Unisafe Box account number. That's it. And whatever is in your wallet at a predetermined time will transfer. Now, the thing you just have to keep in mind is if it's there, if you're doing that as a, quote, dead man switch, if you put it out, say, the end of the month, you do have to remember that to, to uh, reset that reminder or reset that date uh, on a regular basis. Otherwise, if you miss it, that information will transfer to that person. Mm hmm but that's it, and it's on the blockchain, so it's it's safe. You know, it's secured, it's it's encrypted, but it's on the blockchain, so it's not as if it will go away if you forget. Yeah, that, that's super super interesting. Um, and I guess kind of kind of branching from the the whole uh the whole inheritance feature. Um, how are you guys? Are you guys? I guess is it a requirement that you have a pre-existing partnership with a group to utilize this as a as a feature for login information or something like that, or is it something that you guys are setting up for, uh, for kind of like a plug and play for any business to come and integrate with you? Yeah, I mean, it, right now Unisafe Box is is set up for individual users, but a provider could come in and white label it. They could make mm -hmm. it available to their employees, to their team, to their customers, whatever. The, the case may be and you know we'll work out how to brand it or how to add their brand 
there's an opportunity for that. But the way it stands right now, it's set up as a seed product to bring people and bring uh, providers into the ecosystem. But there's, you know, there's a lot of creative ways we can use that and resell it and rebrand it. Gotcha. Very, very interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how that, that gets integrated as well. Is that up and running already? Or is yeah, that... oh, it's okay. out. Okay, yeah. awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it's up and running. And, um, you know, that's when, when we talk about seed products, that was something that was important to us when mm -hmm. we launched the BioFi project. We have the cryptic wallet, which is out there, which is our biometrically secured mm -hmm. cryptocurrency wallet. We've got Unisafe Box. We've got our SafeTech, which is the, the voice and face biometric technology. We've got those. Mm -hmm. They exist. We now have Doge Run, and we're building out the metaverse. So to mm -hmm. us, those are seed products that get people interested in the the BioFi ecosystem. But mm -hmm. the ecosystem is not about Finibon. We're here to get it started, get that ball rolling, and we're going to bring in people like Disk and Providence and Tell Solutions mm -hmm. and you know uh, many many more that we're talking to now. We want people to come in and and build that utility and value to the to the users in the ecosystem. So at some point, although we're seeding it and maybe our products are today 40%, 50% of what's available, we expect someday they're gonna be they're gonna account for a very small portion of what's available in the the ecosystem. We want providers to come in and make their their solutions available to people. And really the two tenants that we insist on when people come in uh, is that they have to protect the person's identity and only use it. It, they, it can't be monetized unless the person has given them um, the permission to do so. And so that you can then monetize it rather than the current model where uh, big tech is monetizing your information. Gotcha. Very, very interesting. And, and then kind of with a, a similar question, going back to to the entire model that you guys, or the, I guess the, the initial product, right? Where we talked about different business, uh, instead of signing in with a username and password, you can now sign in via, you know, facial recognition or some kind of voice recognition. Uh, would, would that also be more of that plug and play technology so that you could, a uh, business could come, a smaller business could come integrate, or is it only available to set partners currently? No, that's that's one of the whole things that that that's one of the big um, efforts behind the, mm -hmm. the ecosystem is the invitation to people to join us for providers to join us, whether they're large or small. Um, you know, they can come in and make secure their their solution, whatever it may be, with biometrics, and then make it available to the community. Yeah, we we want providers of all shapes and sizes uh, to come in and make. We want competition. Right? Mm -hmm. We don't want just us. <laughs> we want competition because we want people who use it BioFi. We want the BioFi community to get real value and utility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love it. I love everything I've heard so far. is is made me extremely excited to uh <laughs> to go share share BioFi a little bit more because it definitely is something that is needed as far as the security as we've seen. You know with all these hacks that are going off almost every other day or, you know, every single day we have some other big hack where like 200 million is lost or, you know, some crazy number. And it, it just seems like right now more than ever, you know, web three needs to catch up on the security uh, because as, as it is now, it's people aren't going to adopt until, uh, until it is more secure. Institutional adoption is, is waiting for that security and that the same with just the, the average person that, you know, that is looking to invest into, into crypto. So I really yeah. love the whole thought process behind it. Good, good. Yes, yeah, security is key for sure. And uh, it's not only key for the people who, who participate in the Web3 space and would be considered Web3 sophisticated, right? People who understand crypto and, and how it works. And, you know, for, for your audience, if I was to say to them, you know, go out and buy BioFi, they could figure it out. Even if they don't, mm -hmm. you know, right now, if they don't know at the moment, they'll figure out, okay, I'll go to CoinGecko, I'll see what exchanges <laughs> they're on, I'll see how I do that, right? What what yeah. network are they on? You know, we're on Avalanche. So they, they'll get to that. Someone who has not had that experience and that exposure not only has security risks or, or concerns, they're going to have, how do I play in the space? It's just a totally different ballgame. So we're, we'll mm -hmm. knock out the security piece, so that's done. And then what we're also trying to do, and I won't spend a lot of time on it unless you want me to, is 
we're going to use that metaverse build out for a lot of things. One of your questions was, where do you see the metaverse technology in five years? Uh, we plan to spend a lot of time on educational efforts in the metaverse, whatever that may be. Learn about our, our ecosystem providers and learn about one of the things we have on the, uh, on the plan is learn about Web3, learn about the crypto space. What is it? How do you play? How do you get involved? Because for people who are out there who have a have a passing interest in it, they just don't know how to get involved. It's too complicated. Mm -hmm. so we're going to help there as well. Education is going to be huge in the metaverse over the next five years. Yes, I one hundred percent. I I think that is going to be the next big stage uh, for the mass adoption piece. After security mm -hmm. comes education, for sure. Right. I love it. I love well, it. I, I'm sorry. Go on. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm just going to jump in on that one. That one point. Um, you know, this is why it's so important to have a just a wonderful, steady supply of these incredible providers. Uh, but one thing uh, I did want to mention when we talked about tokenomics, we do have a, um, a wonderful white paper that's mm -hmm. uh, nice, and short, and concise uh, on the website. We have a one page or a three page, or we also have a a link or a uh, you know just one web page that's devoted to tokenomics. And in there, you'll see all these things I was talking about. There's a nice little diagram. Yeah, I can you'll see in there we talk about the, the users, the providers, you know, how BioFi is it's a very regenerative, super regenerative, the way we've structured it. And um, and then you have the integrators. you got Constellation in there and uh, people like, um, you know, MEXC and Law Token. You know, these guys are all there. Lattice. Uh, they're all kind of in here, you know, from that mm -hmm. regenerative flow perspective. But the beauty of that is that everybody who partakes in the ecosystem and, uh, you know, what Chris is talking about here is so important. It's so incredible getting in and taking it and partaking, really partaking in all the utility of that ecosystem uh, and doing the DCA is such an incredible way to get involved. Mm -hmm. And of course, join Telegram, join Discord, join Twitter. Uh, provide your feedback, you know, listen to the AMAs. This is wonderful stuff to get involved in. Yeah, definitely is the time to be to be looking into uh, new projects that have been building this entire time. And I think you guys have taken the right approach, building for, for years before you, know, you had these products ready to go and then launching, uh, as I believe you said. So that that is definitely something that conventional business will bring more of in, but you guys are are addressing everything in the right ways, and so I'm I'm super excited to see how the metaverse launch goes and and everything to come to come next. But even just to uh to see how adoption comes in the next run with your products, because that's going to be a really huge step forward uh, for crypto as a whole. Yes, and I, and on that point, I would recommend you know AMA wise, we love doing this is picking. Uh, various providers and coming back and talking with them and you directly uh, and the community. This is a great way to explain the utility and show the utility and how this ecosystem runs on its own. That's a beautiful way to get that message out there and share all these incredible new utilities that are being added all the time. Yeah, 100%. I, I think we actually have been uh, I know JoJo is reaching out to some staff in the Constellation Discord, so we're we're hoping to get connected with them for an AMA pretty soon here. But yeah, one hundred percent. I I think that talking to these other partners that you guys do have and and seeing how they're planning, you know, what the things they're planning to do, uh, as far as whether it's further furthering along these same goals or you know taking a broader a broader goal that you guys share and and kind of pushing that forward. Yeah, I, I love it though. I love I love everything we we've talked about. It's been very very educational. I do want to be respectful of your time because I know we're going over a little bit. Uh, so I've been I've been watching the clock, trying not to take too much of your guys' days. But I I really do appreciate you guys from coming on. And more than anything, I appreciate everyone in the audience because it it does mean a lot to have everyone here listening in and uh, hearing about all the crazy things BioFi is doing in the space. Well, we'd love to come back again sometimes. So if you're, you know, you get questions from from the audience, and we are we are so grateful to be here to you and to your audience. So we'd love to do this again. You know, if you have more questions or status updates, you know, we we love yes. doing these. So uh, don't hesitate to reach out. We're glad to do it again. <laughs>
we definitely will not. I, I think we will when we will one hundred percent be wanting you guys to come back because it's it's been a pleasure hearing, you know, firsthand what you guys are doing and, and all these different products that you guys have uh launching. So it's definitely been an awesome experience. Fantastic. Yeah, is there is there anything else you guys wanted to touch up on before uh closing this out? Uh, maybe Chris just remind uh where all the social media is located. Oh, awesome, yeah, we're, awesome. You know, we're, we're on uh, we're on uh, Twitter as Finabon. Uh, we we consolidated all our different channels. We had a couple, but uh, find us on Finabon. Uh, Telegram, we're Biopod Community or Finabon Official. Uh, Discord is Finabon. Uh, you can join us there as well. What else do we have? Uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram are are under Finabon. So uh, yeah, we're pretty much everywhere. So you can find us anywhere. You can reach out on our website. Um, but as Brian said earlier, we're, we spend a lot of time, Brian in particular spends a lot of time on Telegram, you know, engaging with the community <laughs> and, and, and answering questions directly. But yeah, you can pretty much get us well, anywhere you like. And the YouTube channel. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting that one. We just recently did a, did a big upgrade to our YouTube channel. We got a lot of videos out there, uh, including things with, um, <laughs> with, with Crypto Sensei and James Felton, um, mm -hmm. and there's plenty others. We have provider interviews out there, and not only do we have the full AMA videos, we have some snippets too because we know people like me have a limited attention span. They want they want a <laughs> quick sixty second or you know five minute hit rather than uh, an hour video. So yeah, there's plenty of that out there. So please get engaged, follow us there, and when new content comes out, it immediately goes up there. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, and Zach, if you wouldn't mind dropping some more of the links. I know uh, we posted a couple so far of different links, like to the Twitter and, and the white paper and things like that. But if you wouldn't mind posting uh, any of the links that we haven't gone over, Zach, that would be awesome in the AMA question. But yeah, definitely check them out. And I think those short pieces of content are a lifesaver for most people because most people don't have the hour necessarily in their data to spend listening to an AMA or that kind of thing. So definitely You're helps right. people. I'm I'm amazed at the people who hang in there for an hour, and I'm always super grateful for that because, <laughs> it, you know, I know it's, you know, people are busy. It's a, it's a big chunk out of their day. So for those who come and stay, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's, def it's definitely awesome. It, it means a lot to have people listening for an hour, 100%. I, I feel you there. Yeah, for sure. But thank you guys for, for coming on. I, I really appreciate you, and I hope that we, uh, we get to connect again soon in the future. Looking forward to it. Thank you for having us. Thanks to the community. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Have a good one, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thanks, guys. Bye.